Welcome back, folks. I'm sure you're tired of seeing me in my office. Uh, we have a couple more important videos to do over the next two weeks. What we've been doing in this course is going from broad and general and perspectives more and more down to specifics and practical applications. I'm a great believer that you have to have foundations of understanding a subject and the perspectives and principles associated with uh, before you can learn all of the specific applications and tactics. I thought today, since this is a small groups communications course, let's talk about talking. Talking we do every day, but few of us analyze that. Talking is a little bit different than speaking. Speaking is a little more formal where you're the center of attention lining people out, running a, a meeting. Talking is something we do every day. Um, and there are some things to do and not do uh, so that you improve the quality of your talking, so that what you're saying is being received more clearly. Remember from a previous video, video I talked to you uh, about the basic principles of interpersonal communications. Remember? I said, every communication should start with the willingness of both parties or all parties to communicate. Communication forms the basis of relationships, improving relationships, rectifying problems in relationships. If one or both or all parties don't want to communicate, there will be no relationships and communication will be ineffective. Remember what I also said then, after that first principle, the second principle is effective communication then proceeds, remember, with the ability to listen. Listening is the most direct way that we care about somebody, that we're taking the time and energy to actively listen to them. Empathy, understanding, and compassion spin off from the ability to listen. So only now, number three. Shall we talk about talking? <laughs> Here's the basic principle of any kind of verbalizing, whether it's casual talking or formalized speaking. Make sure you engage your brain before you open your mouth. That sounds simple. And how many times have you caught instances of people talking and talking and talking and telling a story and going off on a tangent hoping that they will somehow figure out as they're talking what they want to talk about. Engage your brain, be clear on what you say before you open your mouth. Listeners typically have about a three-sentence attention span. Have you ever had a boring professor or minister or a video presentation where they didn't cut to the chase in the first three sentences and you started floating off into never, never land. Engage people right away. That means you have to be clear on what you're saying. One of the things that talking implies is having a vocabulary. Hopefully here at Western Nevada College, by the courses you have taken online and in person, you're able to start to expand your vocabulary. I'm a great believer uh, that if we can expand our vocabulary, we can communicate a lot more adaptively and reflexively than just using the same old words. The typical 18-year-old English-speaking person has a vocabulary, vocabulary of about 1,350 words, and they only use about 550 of those words on every day. And most of those are swear words. Are you one of those people that swears a lot? Understand that a lot of people may laugh when you say some kind of swear word. A couple of people won't, that they may be put off or even offended by it. It's been my experience that people who swear a lot either do so because they don't have the vocabulary so they fill in with a swear word and or they don't have the emotional control 
Now, a lot of people in construction industry say, I've got to swear, that's the only way I'm going to get my point across. You'll see some alternatives here. If you come across uh, with better vocabulary, people are going to listen to you. If you come across with poise, people are going to listen to you. And then maybe the occasional time that you use a swear word, it will shock them. But if your constant verbalizing is a diet of swearing, people become numb to that. Expand your vocabulary. Just before Ernest Hemingway died, he gave a interview to a reporter talking about his creative writing process. And he said this, that for him, effective writing was to have seven words available for every one word he ended up using. Wow. And that same thing fits with us verbalizing as well. Have a plethora of words available to you for everyone you choose to use. Now, granted, early on when you're uh, inculcating new words uh, into your vocabulary by speaking about them, you may have a, a brain freeze. That's natural. Keep on experimenting with that. Keep on including new words. Keep on um, articulating those new words so they become more comfortable with you so that there is a better than brain mouth link to what you're saying. If you're a, a person who likes quotas, learn one, one new word a day and then go on. <laughs> I was raised in what I called an abusive family not the way you thought about it. But every night at dinner, we would sit down, my sister and I, my mother and father, and they, we were all poor blue collar uh, family. And my dad would always start off the conversation uh, at dinner time with grilling both my sister and me, what new word did we lose or learn today? And he was, uh, he was an intelligent man and he wanted to listen to us and how we used it in that sentence. So guess what? 15 minutes before dinner was ready, where were we? In the dictionary. And that abuse led to the love of language, the love of using different types of words as well. Especially in construction management or different types of even high-tech professions that you will go through, you will have to learn more technical words and adapt to those situations. Sometimes these technical words lead to jargon. Uh, that's fine. Learn those things as you go along. And the more comfortable and proficient you feel with the technical words, then you can include those a lot more fluidly and seamlessly into your communication. Have you ever had someone who talked down to you like you weren't worthy of listening to them or being in the same room of them. It may have been a, uh, a teacher or a preacher, a boss. I'm always cognizant that I always want to talk and to speak formally at the level most of my audience is. Sometimes I'll extend myself and go one level above, but not, not three, four, five levels above. Part of that is showing respect for the listener by the words you use. Have you ever heard a big word? Matriculation, we're talking college. As you matriculate through college, uh, the process of educating yourself through college is matriculation. But a lot of you didn't know the, the definition or the meaning of that word, so you were lost for a while, attempting to figure out what it was, and you weren't listening to what the person was saying, individually or the flow of what he or she uh, was saying. So use vocabulary that fits pretty much at the level of the people who will be listening to that. Not only are your words important, but also your delivery of those words individually and in sentences are important. So talk and speak with energy, with believability, even with passion, look like this. Use gestures, use big facial expressions. Your whole person, verbal, vocal, and nonverbal, is a delivery mechanism for you talking and communicating clearly. Use a strong voice, a confident voice. 
be um, par use powerful words, words that can be translated easily into visual images. Also use active verbs instead of, it was in charge of the situation. Use, I was in charge of the situation. Use more active verbs in what you do. We talked about a lot of things to do, which you already know. I just want to make sure of that. Maybe there's some things you want to emphasize more. Here is one thing most of us are victims of that we need to overcome. And these are things I call, you know, um, well, you know what I mean, dudes. It's, it's kind of like, oh, uh, um, um, uh, um, those verbal fillers that we use. I also call them ver verbal hiccups that we use. Have you ever seen a professor or a preacher or a boss use ums and ahs so much in whatever they say that you almost start writing those down on the paper? How many times they say that? You're not listening to them. And my guess is they've been saying those verbal fillers for so long, they're not only any more aware that they're consciously doing those things. One way uh, to overcome those verbal fillers is first to become aware of them. You've been saying the ums and likes, you know, knows and dudes for so long, you're not even aware anymore. Here, it's one way to do that. If you have a, a child, a younger brother or sister, say to them, Susie, I want to start not saying um so much. So every time I say the word um, would you shout it back at me? And when you do, you will earn a dime from me. So when you say um, she's going to say um. Pay, it, pay her a dime. Very quickly, you will sensitize yourself to the different verbal fillers you use. Once you become aware of those verbal fillers, because they fit into whatever you're saying, and you eliminate those verbal fillers, which is really relatively easy to do after you become aware of them. There are two different methods of coping with that extra space that the verbal filler filled up. Number one is make it in your mind, period, new sentence. Short, clean, clear, crisp sentence. Are, which are articulated with passion, are ones that gain people's attention. So instead of going on and rambling on, especially if you're telling some kind of business story, make it short, clear sentences, seven words maximum, 10 words maximum, and then period in your mind, pause and start the new sentence. Here's another way to eliminate those verbal fillers. All that you want to do is as you come to a section and you'll know when a verbal filler is being going to be conjured up, you can feel it, you can sense it. When you sense this is coming, make sure you extend the sound of the last syllable or last word, or if it's a soft sounding letter, extend the sound of that, where the sound is extending into where you will be using typically the verbal filler. Does that make sense? So the two things, after you become aware of them and becoming aware of them uh, is half the battle, is period, new sentence. And that will help you stay on task uh, uh, online. The second one is to extend the sound of the last syllable or the sound of the letter where the, you think the verbal filler would be. Interestingly, that last one also extends and adds to your sense of the rhythm of your delivery, where you can start slowing down, lowering your voice, making eye contact with the people. The words you use and how you deliver them are more important. So continually listen to others to see how they talk, how they present something more formally observe them, observe their mannerisms, observe what's going through their brains as they're coming up with the next thing uh, they're go going to say. Then learn from good communicators. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. 
as you become aware of your own talking patterns and overcoming your talking defects, when you engage your brain, some good things are going to come out of your mouth. I shall see you next time.